Hello, this is Y490 Politics of the Internet. This lecture was originally delivered on February 15, 2012. The lecture concerns the mobilization of groups via the Internet or Information and Communications Technologies, which we will call e-mobilization. Uh, to reiterate, this is the use of the Internet by interest groups and social movements for political recruitment, organizing, and campaigning. There are three main themes. First of all, uh, the use of the Internet by traditional interest groups, uh, new forms of mobilization, and pure Internet-based direct action. Uh, many interest groups have switched over to using information and communication technologies to communicate with their members or the rest of society and to influence public policy. They achieve influence through traditional means, primarily through the collection and transmission of strategic information to the three branches of government, sometimes called lobbying. <coughs> they may directly provide campaign funds to presidents and other, other uh, politicians who wish to get elected or re-elected. They may decide to take disputes over executive decisions or legislation to the judiciary. Uh, here are some examples of very large interest groups, the National Rifle Association, the American Association of Retired Persons, the AFL-CIO, the National Association of Manufacturers, the American Medical Association, and the Sierra Club. Just for laughs. There are um, types of interest groups. You can think of some as being radical and others being more supportive of the status quo. Uh, many uh, interest groups are multiple issue, uh, but some are single issue groups. Uh, you have a large number of interest groups that represent uh, businesses or producers called producer associations. Uh, there are interest groups that represent consumers, environmentalists, civil libertarians, and so forth. Uh, we often distinguish between peak associations and other kinds of interest groups. Peak associations tend to be organized at the national level and to represent an entire sector of activity, such as the U.S. Chamber of Commerce or the AFL-CIO. Uh, social movements are very closely related with interest groups, uh, although generally larger and somewhat more uh, bottom-up. The social movement tends to be a large group of people focused on carrying out, resisting, or undoing large-scale social changes. Uh, you have some examples, the civil rights movement, the anti-war movement, the environmental movement, uh, the pro-life movement. Social movements may include coalitions of organized interests and, and interest groups. Uh, a recent uh, social movement, uh, which has been questioned, as to whether it might be a, social, a true social movement is the Tea Party um, because it has quite a lot of funding from rich individuals like the Koch brothers and Tom DeLay. Uh, the, uh, there, there are some distinction made between grassroots organizations and so-called astroturf organizations which are supposed to look like grassroots organizations but actually have a small number of major funders. Um, and then we have politicians like Sarah Palin, Dick Armey, Karl Rove, who were obviously uh, part of the uh, the foundation of the Tea Party movement, uh, and uh, they're all obviously Republicans. So the the question of the independence of the Tea Party as a social movement or as a political group from the Republican Party is uh, an important question. Interest groups, uh, nearly all of them testify at hearings, lobby government officials, make informal contacts with legislators, present research or technical information, send letters to members to inform them about, about their activities, and enter into coalitions with other groups. Some interest groups publicize candidate voting record, conduct direct mail fundraising efforts, buy issue advocacy, advocacy advertisements in the print or electronic media, contribute time and staff to election campaigns, endorse candidates, and participate in protests and demonstrations. All of those are possible activities. Uh, traditional campaign methods of both interest groups and campaigns in, in, involve such things as letter writing, phone canvassing, 
direct mail, newsletters, petitions, and the targeting of media outlets. Uh, one of the key questions uh, in literature on interest groups is uh, what makes certain interest groups more successful than others? How do you measure that success in terms of legislation that's passed, uh, in terms of the amount of campaign funds raised uh, or distributed, um, uh, impact on public opinion in various matters, and, and the ability to get the attention of the press? Are there specific types of interest groups that are more successful than others, and what are the factors that make them successful? Um, we know that a lot of uh, new uh, activity is going on in the area of online campaigning, uh, the use of multimedia and interactive technologies to engage potential supporters. Uh, this is both for social movements and political parties. Um, so obviously there's been some switch over to the use of email and websites, and petition websites, particularly uh, for fundraising. Uh, there's been much more uh, online solicitation of support and, uh, and now uh, in the last bunch of campaigns there's been quite a bit of use of internet applications uh, to arrange meetings and rallies, uh, parties and so forth, meetups. Um, uh, one of the things that was uh, uh, innovated in the uh, run-up to the 2008 presidential election. Uh, one of the more successful organizations on the left uh, that, that uses these methods is moveon.org. So um, we've had a lot of online political campaigns of various sorts. Uh, a really early one involved Lotus Marketplace. Uh, this is uh, problems with the, the privacy guarantees of, of the Lotus uh, Corporation uh, produced a, a certain amount of uh, lobbying and political activity on the part of um, computer users. Uh, the Clipper chip proposed by the Clinton administration uh, w would have enabled the National Security Agency and other other agencies to uh, decode encrypted data um, and this uh, this idea was killed after very strong opposition from some fairly specific uh, computer user groups. Uh, one of those is the Electronic Frontier Foundation founded in 1990 by Mitch Kapor of Lotus uh, was co-founded by John Perry Barlow who is still on the board. Uh, the mission of the EFF is to defend free speech, privacy, innovation, and consumer rights on the internet. Computer Professionals for Social Responsibility was founded in 1981 by engineers mostly at Xerox Park and Stanford in response to the Reagan administration uh, strategies for uh, a re-emphasis on self-defense in case of a nuclear attack uh, for sort of war fighting strategy. Anyway, the CPSR is a public interest alliance of people concerned about the impact of information and communications technology on society. It has members in 30 countries uh, and mainly focuses on freedom of speech issues, privacy, and internet governance. Uh, much more professionally organ or, or uh, much more professional organization is the Association for Computing Machinery (ACM), which is uh, has special interest groups and a separate uh, office for public policy. Uh, it focuses primarily on advancing computing as a discipline, balancing intellectual property and innovation, protecting privacy, and assuring the security and reliability of systems. Um, we have a lot of examples of online organizing uh, in the 1990s. Uh, the Environmental Defense Fund, PETA, the Zapatistas, uh, you have uh, the rise of the smart mobs and flash mobs uh, discussed by Howard Reinhardt in his book, uh, Smart Mobs. And uh, we also have the rise of hackers and hacktivists. A hack, hacker is originally referred to somebody who hacked through difficult coding thickets to arrive at a working piece of software. Uh, other meanings now include someone interested in defeating or strengthening computer security measures, which is also called a cracker as opposed to a hacker, or a person who supports the free and open software movement. Um, 
A hacktivist is a person who engages in the nonviolent use of the illegally, illegal or illegally ambiguous digital tools in the pursuit of political ends. Uh, here are some of the tactics used by hacktivists. Uh, the de defacing of websites, distributed denial of service attacks, ping storms, email bombings, malicious code or malware attacks, and redirects. Uh, we'll, we'll be dealing with some of these later on when we talk about some specific issues. Uh, we also have the example, fairly prominent examples of WikiLeaks and Anonymous. In recent years, uh, WikiLeaks was uh, supposed to provide a platform for whistleblowers of all sorts. Um, there's a big con controversy over there that their uh, video that they released called Collateral Murder which involved some classified uh, video from uh, a helicopter gunship attack in Iraq. Uh, the Then WikiLeaks uh, leaked a huge number of cables uh, that had been given to them by a member of the US military who was currently in jail. Uh, then uh, several governments, including the US government, went after the head of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, uh, for uh, various crimes. Anyway, um, one uh, another organization uh, completely independent from WikiLeaks is, is called Anonymous. Anonymous has been a kind of radical supporter of um, maximal openness uh, of the internet. Anyway, we'll talk about Anonymous later on too. Uh, I I personally like uh, the work of the Yes Man, who are a group of culture jamming activists who practice what they call identity correction by pretending to be powerful people and spokespersons for prominent organizations. They create fake websites similar to uh, actual ones that they wish to parody or spoof. Uh, they accept invitations on their websites to appear at conferences, symposia, and TV shows, and you can find out more about them by going to their website. So in chapter six of the textbook, we have these questions. Uh, how have traditional interest groups adapted to the internet? Do the effects of the internet on interest groups and social movements go beyond simply increasing the efficiency of communication? Um, is hacktivism a form of political action? Could the hybrid forms of political organization, such as Move On, have existed before the internet? Must political mobilization rest upon face-to-face -face interaction?